Hey guys, I'm back. So today uh, I'm going to be talking about the flyback transformer again. Um, you can see this is actually a different transformer than I used uh, last time. Here, let me get it. Okay, so this is the transformer I was using last time. Um, now I'm using this one. No particular reason, um, just, just to switch it up a little bit. All right, but here you can see that I've done something special, and that will be the topic of today's video, um, is I've actually wound my own feedback, or what's called a flyback coil, and the primary coils. Okay, so if you didn't know, I suggest you watch my last video. It's based off of uh, this schematic here. Oh, shoot, it's, it's not focusing. Okay, this schematic, so you have 6 to 24. In this case, my power supply goes up to 17. Some resistors here. Uh, you got a transistor, feedback, primary, secondary, and across this is where the high voltage comes out, okay? So, problems with um, the previous flyback design had been in the past, uh, at least my design, were that you actually had to find the pinout uh, of the f uh, primary and secondary, which took a lot of time and effort, right? Um, it was a pain in the butt to go through and actually map out every pin and figure out which connections worked. So it's much easier, in fact, to get yourself some magnet wire, just like this, you know, just regular magnet wire. And in fact, just wrap it around and form your own primary and your own flyback uh, coil. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, again, uh, just make sure for this design that you put a heat sink on your 2N3055. I have a fan here just because I'm using higher power. And some pretty beefy resistors are also uh, helpful. So, um, just for reference. Okay, so um, how do I uh, even build this thing? Well, let me explain. So you know that you need to have a flyback coil and a primary coil. And just as I've drawn in the diagram, the flyback coil needs to be fewer turns. Um, that's just the way it works than the primary, okay? And so um, what, what needs to happen is you need to get the orientation right. So you can't just connect them up any which way. Any which way. You actually have to connect um, this part of the, you know, you have to connect the flyback uh, to the right spot. So, the way you connect it, which side you connect to the base and to the middle of the resistors actually matters. If you swap the order, it won't work. Okay? The order I found works, in fact, is that um, if you notice for the primary coil in this diagram here, so for the, oops, okay, so um, this is the primary coil, this is the flyback coil, this is the high voltage coil. We're not going to worry about this one, it doesn't really matter. Okay, it's, no, it's nothing you have control over. Now, what I found for the, each coil is that each coil is connected directly to a voltage source. So this coil is connected directly to a voltage source here, and this coil is connected directly to a voltage source here, okay? What needs to happen is that the parts of the coils, at least for my flyback, this could be different, but maybe it's not, I don't know, so I'll tell you anyways. Um, try this first, at least. Some arrangement should work. Um, there's only a four like possible combinations. But each part of the coil that's connected to a voltage source, so this one that goes to the middle to the flyback, and this one that goes directly to the voltage source, needs to be connected next to each other. So in fact, this flyback coil and diagram should be reversed. So, um, the, so the part of the flyback that connects to the middle of the resistor divider should be here in the, in the middle, and then the part that connects the, of the primary that connects to the voltage should be also in the middle. And then the part of the flyback that connects to the base should be on the outside, and the part of the um, primary that connects to the collector should be on the outside. Okay, so in fact, you can see that's what I've done here. Um, this is the part of the flyback that connects. This, this one right here is the flyback wire. Uh, it goes to the um, middle of the resistors. Uh, and this one here, you can see they're also, they both start in the middle and go outwards. This part is connected to the... Um, in my case, 17 volts, but your voltage source. This edge is connected to the collector of the transistor. So this edge of the coil on the outside, you can see. And then this edge is connected to the base of the transistor. So you need it going outwards. And the way I've wound my coils are, you can see, I start at the bottom, and then I loop up around, and then I go in the bottom, and I loop up around. So it's like this is the way I've wound both of my coils. So I've wound them both in the same direction. Okay, so... Um, I found that that's the most efficient way to do it. That's the way I've done it, and it works pretty well for me. Um, obviously, um, with this single 2N3055 flyback driver, uh, really voltage will make the most uh, difference. 
Um, so voltage means a difference more than anything. So if you can, the higher voltage you can push this thing, this, in my case, the, the, my power supply um, here only went up to 17 volts, but um, the higher you can push this thing, that's what's going to cause more voltage. Um, everything else really doesn't make a huge amount of difference in comparison to the voltage. So, um, yeah, so uh, that's how you actually wind the coils in the direction, and you have to orientate them. Now, if what I said doesn't work for you, because maybe your secondary is wound a different way, uh, and I have a feeling here is that this thing is actually a, a high-voltage diode, That because uh, what happens is your flyback is going to make AC on the secondary. Then it gets rectified, half-wave rectified through that diode before it goes out, right? Um, and I have a feeling the thing it works is the AC has to be in the right phase, uh, in the right direction for it to get out the diode. So that's why you have to wind these the right way. They have to be in phase with this secondary coil so that the voltage can actually get out the diode. So um, if that doesn't work, experiment. Um, there's only really four possible combinations. Uh, it's not that hard. I had to experiment to do this. It took me like 10 minutes at most. So it's not really that difficult. Now. What's more interesting is, in fact, which, uh, how many windings you do for each. So I already said that the feedback coil has to be relatively small, and the primary has to be larger than the feedback coil. The secondary is so many turns, and it's already done for you. So just a note on selecting your transistor, or your transformer, sorry. Uh, your transistor could be 2N3055. Basically, any large transistor will work. You can look. People have tested it on the web. Um, but you want something where the entire core of the transformer comes out and is accessible. So in this case, I could actually start in the bottom and wind my wire all the way around. The whole core is accessible. Another transformer, sometimes where the core is all covered up, you don't want because the core, you can't, you can't really get to it. Okay? So um, that's just a note. It'll make your life a lot easier if you're not trying to poke it through small spaces. But what I've done here is, uh, let me refocus the camera. So what I've done here is I've actually made a table. Now this is all graphed in Excel. I'll put it, I'll put it on the screen so you don't have to look at the table. But I've actually taken every combination of flyback turns from uh, one all the way up through six, and this is two through five on this page. And I've all, I've compared it with uh, primary turns nine through eighteen. So I've gotten the whole range. I've, I you know, um, six is pretty much the maximum I took for the flyback and 9 was the minimum for the primary, 18 was the maximum for the primary, and 1 was the minimum for the flyback. So, um, yeah, so I actually found the best combination out of all of these, and the best combination I found was the one I have here. So, 5 flyback turns, so this one right here, 5 flyback turns, and 16 primary turns. So, in fact, if you can see here, I have 1, 2, three, four, five on the flyback. So the way I'm counting turns here is I'm just counting how many times you can see the wire on the top. So it's five and then 16 on the primary. So three, seven, 10, uh, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So that's, that's what I've done. I found the most efficient combination was five flyback and 16 primary. Um, you can see it, it doesn't seem to have, it seems to start cutting off above six, which is why I didn't go any higher, but um, you're welcome to experiment, but out of all of these combinations, I didn't even bother to count how many, but I suppose it would be six times nine, so 54 combinations that I tried. Um, it, that uh, five on the flyback and 16 on the primary is the um, most ideal combination, so you should probably uh, use that combination when you're uh, doing your flyback, because it worked best for me. However, Every combination um, that I tried gave me an arc. Sometimes the arcs were a little bit unstable. Um, sometimes they weren't as big. Sometimes they started. I also measured um, when the, at what distance the arc started and what distance the arc ended. And I never really got above um, six and a half thirteenths of an inch, or in other words, um, 13 twenty thirds of an inch. So that's um, certainly more than half an inch, but not by much. But um, every combination of turns that I tried worked. So if we take this flyback here, right, um, and we can at least in that range. So this, I consider this one turn on the primary, okay? So this is one turn, right? Just, just like that. So that's one turn in my view, okay? Even this gave me an arc. Now, most of them, most of the arcs were pretty unstable. Uh, you really had to start getting up to 17 on the primary. 16, 15, 17 on the primary, 
uh, before it's, it's actually started to get a little bit stable. But um, even then, we got a maximum of about 4 thirteenths of an inch, which is not actually not uh, terrible. So even if you can only do this on the flyback, uh, it'll still work. So basically what I'm trying to say is that um, it's pretty forgiving. Now, you can optimize it, but the optimum setting was only you know, half a thirteenth of an inch better than, you know, most other settings. So, um, it's pretty forgiving. You can, you can pretty much take any combination you want. Now, um, for the power supply for this flyback, um, just a custom built power supply. I haven't tested how many amps it's drawing, but, you know, my guess is about an amp or two. Uh, but the interesting thing is it's actually very difficult to, um, measure how large a flyback arc is because you can't, so you can see here, I tried to actually measure it um, with this metal rod on top of some tape making some marks, but of course it just burned the tape, right? So what I actually had to do was I had to rig up this setup. So what I've done is I took the, um, the, the high voltage negative and I actually attached it to a, uh, a paper clip. Then I stuck it under some tape next to this, uh, on this cylinder here. It's just meant for like measuring its borescalit. I don't know how you quite say that, but glass. And I just taped it so that it would start on this line. And I measured each line was a thirteenth of an inch. And I know that's not a standard measurement, but it worked. And this is the only measurement system I could use. So then I would start, and I had the high voltage uh, on like a chicken stick here, also with another paper clip. And I would start, I would essentially just move it in and start the arc and then draw it out until it stopped and do that a few times and then see what I saw. And this is the only good measurement system I found that didn't melt or burn on me. So um, that was pretty interesting. Now, another interesting uh, factor with that is that actually, because I'm using the same paper clip, uh, it actually got um, blued. Like on this tip here, you can see I've been, I've been striking the arc to this point, this tip right here, and then also to the, you know, basically to this black line where it got burned by the tape. And you can see it's actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually been blued. It's not shiny anymore. It's a dull color. And I don't think the arc strikes quite as well to that um, for some reason. So if you're really serious about this, you should really get stainless steel because that handles high voltage quite well. Um, but I wasn't super serious, so it's not a huge deal. Um, all right, so, uh, you know, that's, that's the boring technical stuff. Let's start with, let's, uh, you know, have some fun, really, because that's what it's all about. So this is the optimum setting that I got. Here, let me put a shadow on it so you can see it better. So in fact, this wasn't actually the best setting for the arc striking distance. In fact, it struck pretty, um, much closer. I could get some of them to strike a 13, a 13th and a half inch farther out, but this actually gave me the best setting for um, arc length. So what's interesting is that the arc really likes to strike to the tip. It doesn't like to start in the uh, the middle of the paper clip, right? So it likes to find a tip. It's, it's in fact quite unstable when you try to give it like this. You see it can't, it doesn't draw the arc and it starts much closer when you don't give it a tip, and that's probably due to the skin effect, because high voltage likes to travel on the, uh, the edge of things. So in fact, the high voltage here is actually traveling on the, um, the skin, or the, the surface of the metal, and it likes to actually strike to the tip of the paper clip, because that's, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, for some reason, doesn't strike as easily other places. Uh, and it's also powerful enough to go right through tape and burn it. Pretty fun stuff here. But let's turn off the lights, and this can get even, even better. What's really cool is if we get an arc here, we start blowing. It's really cool.
and you always got to make sure to short it out afterwards.